Thank you. All right. Well, thank you for um, having me here like you had a choice. Um, it's great to be in North Carolina. I, our team is from uh, Los Angeles, and I'm here with uh, one of my co-founders, uh, Jason, our CTO, and uh, one of our first employees, Alex, also here. So we're excited to uh, interact and, and talk more uh, specifically about, about payments. Um, so my slideshow is, I don't know if this is working. Uh-oh, it's going the wrong way. Maybe it's this one. There we go. Well, you saw half of the slideshow already, so we just skip to the end. Um, so I'm, I'm going to talk specifically today about nonprofit payments. Um, before I do, I want to talk a little bit about uh, my background, just to help understand why I've become passionate about payments in the nonprofit space. Uh, a lot of people early on said there's no money to be made, or there's not a lot of money flowing through the nonprofit industry, so why does it need a sophisticated payments solution? Uh, we're going to address that because it's actually quite the opposite. Uh, there's a lot of currency. There's a lot of uh, money flowing into the nonprofit space, not just here in the United States, but all around the world. And so I, wanna, I, wanna I want to address that. Um, I spent a decade uh, building and starting nonprofit organizations, and we did so uh, through non-traditional means in terms of how we raised. 95% uh, of the funds we raised were online. Uh, it, ever since uh, 2004 is the first nonprofit that I started. And this was before, you know, things like Kickstarter or crowdfunding were really a, a big thing. And so our team was comprised, we felt very much like a tech startup. We were comprised of engineers. We built our own custom solutions. Uh, it was expensive, uh, but we were able to raise a lot of funds for the different programs that we were operating. Um, fast forward to 2015 when I started Fundraise. Uh, I was experiencing the same pain points um, that I was experiencing the first day in the nonprofit space. That uh, payments were clunky, nonprofit so software was clunky, and if this has been a problem for 10 years, it was time to actually do something about it. So we started, uh, we started fundraising in 2015, and um, I, wanna, I wanna share a little bit about the, the actual market. I wanna look first here in the United States alone. So you've got a, a million and a half nonprofit organizations that are registered with the IRS here in, in the United States. And between those organizations, over $450 billion a year is donated to charity. How many people in this room donated to charity in 2018? That's about right, 95% of Americans uh, donate to charities in the United States. And I'm sorry about the experience you probably encountered when giving to one of those charities. Um, that was a joke, you could laugh, but it's okay if you <laughs> don't want to. Um, $450 billion, and a lot of people say, well, most of that's probably coming from government funding or grants. Uh, opposite, 70% of this $450 billion is coming through people like you and me, individuals giving to charities. So um, the more staggering stat is only 10% of that today is actually being captured online. Um, so about $35, $40 billion last year in 2018 was donated online, and the other 300 plus was, or close to 400 uh, billion, was donated through checks and other kind of archaic methods. Um, so there's a huge opportunity in the nonprofit industry to transform this industry, to move it to go online, and to introduce it to a whole nother group of donors that are not giving today simply because they can't do so in a way that feels familiar and safe to them um, to, do, to do online. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk, spend some time talking about um, some of the uh, problems that we've identified. Um, so Fundraise um, is a, a SaaS company. Uh, we have built a platform, basically everything from a CRM to email marketing to crowdfunding and peer-to-peer, one-time and recurring payments. Basically, your, tr your modern fundraising stack, we can do it all. We bring all these features together in one place um, so that you don't have to use four or five different solutions. And I'm excited that I don't have to talk really any more about fundraise because I'm not selling to you. You're not our ideal customer profile. Uh, I'm more excited to talk about the actual payment strategy we've deployed to build our business. Uh, and we've been doing so actually since the beginning of 2015 using uh, Spreedly's API. Um, so real quick, a couple of problems that uh, we addressed early on when building out the model, when building out the company, we looked at, we looked at the nonprofit space uh, we, through the lens of the experience that we had uh, and the research that we were doing, and we saw two predominant problems. And this one is really uh, the problem of the root problem is that the nonprofit space is very fragmented in terms of, of payments, um, and what that has led to is just really bad UI 
across the board, which isn't always necessarily a payments problem, um, but what you see consistently across the board when you're going to give to charities, and if you're doing so online, is that nine times out of 10, it's an experience that you would never want to put your credit card into. Uh, you're, it feels unsafe, it doesn't feel familiar with anything that we've purchased or bought or interacted with online in the last decade. Um, nonprofits um, are behind, and, and this UI is actually impacting their overall uh, processing. Um, and I want to harp on this because this is actually really the root problem uh, that, non that we have identified in, in the nonprofit space as it relates to payments, is that it's very fragmented. So when we went to, when we went to start the company, uh, you know, we were like, how are we going to process payments? What, what gateway are we going to build on top of? Um, and, you know, at the time, uh, we were looking at Stripe or Authorize or WePay, all these gateways that are out there in the market. And the problem is we couldn't and still can't find really any consensus amongst any of these gateways across a wide variety of, of the nonprofit market. So every nonprofit are using gateways that we probably have never heard of. Um, so building our solution on top of a singular gateway would have isolated us from the wider, the, the bigger market that exists today. Uh, and so we took a step back. We didn't know how to solve the problem or originally. And uh, we had actually built a, a prototype of our uh, first beta product, which is our giving forms, on top of a singular gateway. And it was the 11th hour. We were getting ready to launch beta in about a month. And one of our uh, good friends uh, who was on our friends and family round basically came across Spreedly in like the 11th hour. And our team started looking at uh, Spreedly's APIs. And we immediately said, this is, this is the solution to the problem we're trying to solve. Um, this will help us address not just the U.S. market, but it would allow us to go to market internationally on day one. Uh, and that was important to us because a lot of organizations uh, that are based in the United States have huge international donor bases. And we wanted to be able to provide the experience of those donors uh, in their own currencies to, to give. Um, so we found Spreedly. We completely flipped uh, the prototype, uh, rebuilt it, still stayed on time, and launched with Spreedly in beta and have been very proud Spreedly customers um, ever, ever since, and are continuing to reap the benefits of, of, that, of that solution. So I want to talk about how universal tokenization has actually helped build our business. Uh, there's three key components uh, I, I want to talk about um, and highlight as it's, it's really been game-changing for us um, as, as a company. So a uniform payments API. Um, today's donor um, does not have a preferred method of giving. Right, today is like modern donors, someone who's going to give online. Um, and you know, online donors really don't have, when we think about online giving, you know, a lot of times people, uh, nonprofits might assume, oh, like $100, $1,000. But we're seeing people give $100,000 plus online uh, through various methods. Uh, and so nonprofit organizations need to be able to, to be set up to be able to uh, transact these, these types of gifts. And so um, early on, we decided that we would unify all the different payment methods, obviously, through uh, Spreely's API. And so from day one, we were able to offer, obviously, credit card, a uh, really nice PayPal integration, uh, crypto, uh, so you can donate crypto through uh, the fundraise giving forms, uh, and have slowly introduced other methods like Apple Pay uh, and, and so forth. And so when a, a customer onboards with fundraise, they have the ability to accept um, all these different uh, payment methods without having to go through, through much trouble of, of setting anything up and without having to scope out a specific, maybe even gateway that, that supports it. Uh, we allow for multiple gateway connections on the fundraise platform, so this allows us to address um, unique problems that nonprofits have or if an organization is trying to raise in a certain country and they maybe have to use a certain gateway for that, uh, they uh, are allowed to connect multiple gateways uh, to the fundraise platform. This has really allowed us um, has given us an advantage. Um, gateway ag agnostic. So uh, as I mentioned earlier, this goes back to the, the problem, is most nonprofits are tied to a specific gateway, uh, merchant accounts. They have relationships with uh, these entities. And so you know, that's one thing to disrupt their business and move them on to a new CRM or a new, uh, old, whole new set of fundraising tools. And then it's another to say, hey, by the way, you also have to change your gateways. Um, that's just a barrier of entry, oftentimes is, is going to be challenged. When I was in the nonprofit space, we never switched because of that very reason. And, and so what this has allowed us to do is to really not even have, have to have a conversation 
uh, about gateways. And then for bigger uh, enterprise customers that use Fundraise, it's also given us the ability to shop around their rates on their behalf so that we can, if they want to see a cheaper credit card processing rate, we can actually um, bid their processing volume across different gateways. And we've done this multiple times. Uh, for one of our customers that transacts millions online, we were able to bring down their processing by an entire percent uh, by shopping it around to different gateways. And so we've created this opportunity to, although Fundraise is often the more expensive software solution when going against competitors, we're, overall, if you look at everything all in, we're typically cheaper because we can help navigate the processing rates and lower those processing rates, which doesn't affect our model as, as a company. And so being gateway agnostic has really allowed us to attack the market in a completely different way than a lot of our competitor, competitors. And this one was really hard to think of like a succinct word, um, but um, productizing vendor innovation. So uh, what we've been amazed at uh, in the last you know, four years uh, utilizing payment, uh, Spreely's payment API is just their rate of innovation. Uh, the new features that they, that they release and that, and that they add that we then can adopt um, and productize into our platform. Uh, we've talked a lot about uh, today uh, Auto Account Updater. Right? This is an actual product that we can resell to our customer base, that we can charge for, that we can say, hey, if you, uh, a lot of our uh, customers have their own subscription programs, uh, recurring revenue. We've got organizations that you know, have thousands and thousands of, of subscriptions, and nonprofits literally have jobs for people to call recurring donors every day if their card expires or if their card, um, if they get a new credit card. And they're spending so much unnecessary time uh, being inefficient making these phone calls when now there's obviously technology to do the work for you and to give that person more time to build effective relationships and to cultivate their donor base. And so being a part of, of this, uh, or using Spreely's API and uh, really piggybacking off of their innovation, we can release those types of things to our customer base. Um, and uh, in many ways, you know, our, our customers really don't know who Spreely is. And so Fundraise gets a lot of, a lot of the credit for this like, innovation that's happening behind the scenes. And, um, and therefore can charge for new features and so forth. And so it's really allowed us to, uh, to productize um, things and not have to be the payment experts, right? We come from a background where we understand the software that our, uh, our market needs in terms of, of like features that are non-related to payments. And we know that payments is really the crux of everything and it's important, um, but we don't have to be, we don't have to have an in, a payment engineer team of 10 people to have a really sophisticated, strong payments strategy in this space. Uh, and so that's, that's something that, that we appreciate. And again, there uh, have been so many downstream effects that we have been able to grow the business as, as, as a result of uh, basically using uh, the payments API. Uh, I'm excited to be, also be a part of the panel if there are any questions. I'll be around all week as well. Looking forward to talking more and interacting with you all then. Thanks. Thank you.